How's it going, ladies and bruce? I'm Bobby Sixkill, and welcome back to the Seven Enigma. I think we're getting close to the end of Elijah's Line Zero memories as uh, Tara's about to die from the virus, and uh, he's going to have to make the decision between, well, we know the answer to the decision already, but the decision between whether he's going to save the world or save his daughter, I guess, from or figure out a way to keep her existence from disappearing entirely. Let's carry on, shall we? Every day, our symptoms are getting worse. The disease is heartbreaking. Close to 8 billion people suffered from this. That amount of suffering worldwide? I can't even begin to wrap my head around it. Okay, sweetie, I have to go now. I'll put you over in the playroom now. Be a good girl. I'll be back soon. But Dad, can I come too? Are you going to see Mummy? Sorry, but Mummy's very sick at the moment. Raya abruptly launches her voice in protest. No, I want to see Mummy. Raya stomps her foot. Standing with eyes locked with her father, who pauses to consider the feelings of his daughter. Calmly, he crouches down to get on her level, and responds with a gentle voice. Sweetie, I'd love for you to visit Mummy, but did you see how she was yesterday? Yes, she didn't speak to me at all. Rhea speaks honestly, her sadness crushing Elijah's heart as he watches on. She would love to talk to you if she could. She's just too sick at the moment. I'm going to check on her and speak to the doctor. But can't I come too? I won't be long today, love. And because I need to speak to the doctor, it'd be better if you could stay here. Is that okay, love? No. But would you do it for me anyway? I'll give you a treat when I get back. I don't like it. But you'll help me out today. Hmm. Okay. Get the doctor to make mummy better so I can see her tomorrow. Okay, love. Let's get you set up with your game. Elijah once again makes the lonely walk to the quarantine block. A sense of foreboding covering each step should offer the doctor a treat. Maybe that'd get him some incentive to fix it. Elijah approaches the familiar intercom with trepidation. Hi, love. Oh, hey. Uh, hey, when will we be going back home? Sorry, I don't understand what you mean. You know, back to... Uh. Tara tries to follow the thread of thought but loses it along the way. Anyway, can you open the door? I'm stuck in this bed. Sorry, sweetheart, you're sick, remember? You have to stay in there for now. Ah, uh, I... My head though, it's killing me. Could you give me some tablets? I'll go speak to the doctor for you. One minute, love. Elijah switches modes on the intercom system, using it to call the doctor in his office. Hello? The, tight, the tinny voice sounds through the small intercom speaker. Hi, Dr. Peters, it's Elijah here. Oh, hello, Elijah. I see you calling from the quarantine room. How's she doing today? Not great, her confusion has gotten bad in the last week. And today she was complaining of the pain in her head. I see. I'll up the level of painkillers and anti-inflammatory agents. Where is she up to now? As in, how far has it progressed? And what's going to happen from here? She's at about the one month stage now. But the treatments we've given her, her condition hasn't deteriorated to where it usually would be at the one month mark. In that sense, she's doing quite well. And what can we expect from here? As you know, we can only slow down the effects and lessen the symptoms of the illness. I hate to be blunt, but she'll only continue to decline from here. How long would she normally have? I can't really say. It varies a lot. Most don't make it without treatment to the one month mark, and many to that point even with treatment. So really it's just an exercise of how long we should keep this going. I'm confident we could keep her stable medically for at least another month, given her progress so far. And what quality of life would she have? <sighs> to be honest, it wouldn't be very good, Elijah. Usually they take a turn in their condition where the pain and symptoms reach a tipping point. She's not reached that point yet, but she isn't far from it. From there it would be heavy medication and keeping her as comfortable as possible until the end. Elijah pauses with a melancholic look. He stares through the glass at the woman he loved, who was slowly being torn away from him. We've already spoken, as did she, about her wishes for the end. Yes, we got her consent in advance and all the preparations have been made. And in your professional opinion, when would be the right time to enact it? It's hard to say exactly. I would say though that sh it should be after a patient has lost usual cognition, but before they take the turn to start experiencing the worst of the symptoms. Would you say she's at that point now? Is she still aware of where she is and what's happening? How is it conversing? Sometimes she's very tired and nauseous. When she's awake her language is still fine, she just seems to not know her situation and has trouble recognizing and remembering things. And this has been consistent? Has she had some days where she's cognizant? Or is, she just, or is it just getting worse? Not for the last week, basically worse every day. The neurological symptoms differ person to person, depending on the inflammation and spread of the illness. 
For some it affects movement first, for some language, for some sight, for some memory. The illness will only continue to spread now, to the other areas of the brain. I can't be totally sure of the progression, but I would say she's very close to that tipping point, based on what you've said. So what you're trying to say is that we're approaching the right moment. If I were in your position, I would do it soon. Okay then, I'll come back tomorrow. Be ready. Alright then. Elijah ends the call on the intercom, and sta stands at the glass, staring wistfully for a long time. With the intercom still off, he mutters, Goodbye, Tara. I'll honour your wish. I'll see you again in the new timeline, when all of this will be wiped from our minds. When everything of this pathetic world is expunged as it should be. Wait for me there. I'll be right behind you. February 1st, 2016. So we should be back with the people? Alright guys, time to wake up. We get a meeting over breakfast. Pfizer gives a large yawn as she stretches out her arms to rouse herself. Right, I'm up. Just gotta get ready. Amelia is the real pain to wake up. Where's the other girl? Mia? Dunno. Probably already out there. She's a morning person. I'd like myself, as you can see. Oh, and by the way, thanks for letting us crash here. No problems. You're one of us for the time being, so I don't think anything of it. Sleep well? Not too bad. I got some nasty bruises from last night. For someone your size, you've got some serious venom in your striking. Thanks. Guess that makes two of us. I'm fairly bruised up myself. No hard feelings, yeah? Of course not. Sounds like you're just trying to look out for Elijah, so... Whilst I don't like getting attacked in the dark like that, I can't understand why you did it. Gee, you're a saint too. Well anyway, we better head over. Get yourself ready. And hopefully I'll figure out a way of waking up, waking up Amelia. We're meeting in the office room where Elijah is. I don't like to leave him for too long, so we figured we'd meet him there instead. We'd meet there instead. No problems. I thought Zara wasn't gonna... wasn't gonna leave her there... leave uh, Elijah there on his own. Thanks for getting everyone... gathering everyone. Obviously last night was a little crazy and probably wasn't the best time to go deep into figuring things out. Now that we've all slept and calmed down a little, it's time we discuss what happens from here. Pfizer and Mia. I trust everything was okay for the both of you last night? Yep, all good here. Good, Pfizer. Last night you mentioned you had something you wanted to discuss. Why don't we start with that? Okay. So as you heard last night, I had a run-in with Agent Beckett. You know who he is, I'm guessing. Yeah, we know him. He was chasing us down in the tunnels. One of his officers shot my arm. They barely even scratched you. You're being a bit dramatic. Shh. Right. Anyway. We were tracking him in order to find Elijah, as we told you. What I didn't mention last night was the device we took from him. What kind of device was it? Not something I've ever seen before. The way Beckett was protecting it makes me think it's pretty significant. I got it with me. Take a look. Pfizer brings out the black case, and opening it up, she places the device on the table. What does it look like to you, Jasper? Jasper moves in for a closer inspection. Hmm. Well, it resembles a miniaturized ID scanner at first glance, but I don't think that's what it is. Jasper tinkers with the unit for a few moments, looking intently with quizzical eyes. It seems to be fitted with retro housings. So it's pretty sophisticated underneath, which is plain bizarre. I take it you've deactivated it and checked for, your tra for trackers? Yeah, we did a thorough once over. I better not switch it on either, it'll connect to their network and they'll be here in no time. I'll open up the back panel here, see what's inside. Jasper goes into the drawer and retrieves a small screwdriver and starts to unscrew the back panel. Pfizer, did you get any hints at what the device might be used for? Not directly. When I was tracking Agent Beckett, he went in and shot up a bar in the western sector. I was on the outside, so I could only go by what I heard, but after he left, I snuck a peek inside. What was strange about it was how little commotion there was. He went into that bar, into a bar that had, well, I think it was eight people in it, with no backup, just himself and his assistant. He shot up the place, killing everyone inside, and just wandered away holding the case in his hands. They were a good group of guys too, it was a huge loss for the sector. You think that was connected to the device in some way? I'm not sure, but if it wasn't, I don't see why he would have brought it in. He must have taken it in for some reason. This is... very unusual. What is it, Jasper? The device is unlike anything I've ever seen. How? Well, some of the components are familiar. Sections of it use similar circuitry to neural ID scanners. However, the core component in the middle here is just bizarre. Here, have a look for yourself. Jasper tilts the device so the rest of the group can see. What is that thing? It looks like a small ball. Or like a large marble. Pfizer, does that look as familiar to you as it does to me? It's the... it's Dr. Elijah's orb. 
Pfizer leans in, leans in to get a clear view of it. Yeah, it looks like a small version of the device Elijah was always steering in. What device? Well, when Elijah was going downhill, he would often get out this strange orb device. He'd just stare at it, mumbling about how he couldn't finish it. Right, and that orb was the same one he was working on down in the tunnels. So you think this looks like a similar design to the one Elijah had? Similar, but not the same. This was larger and looked more complicated, as it had more of those squiggly things going through it. What are your thoughts, Jasper? I haven't seen anything like this before. Going off what Pfizer and Mia have just said, and comparing it to the plans we recovered in the tunnels, I'd say the technologies are at least related in some way. I wonder what the common link is. No idea, but both devices almost certainly have something to do with the brain. I don't like this. The Bureau is definitely up to something. Wait a minute, it's got a tiny inscription here on the back. Let's see, it says Aeon. What does that mean? Did you say Aeon? Give me a look. Amelia dashes in, pushing her eyes as close to the device as she can manage. Hey, not so close. Is it the same as what we saw, Amelia? It is. It also looks like a smaller version of what we saw in the city, now that I think about it. What are you both talking about? Well, we forgot to mention it, as we weren't exactly sure if it was important or not at the time. We saw something a bit strange when we were in the city getting supplies. Throughout the western sector, there were what looked like maintenance crews going throughout and putting in these dishes. Yeah, at first they thought they were new scanners, but they seemed a bit different. Yeah, they also had the same exact same inscription, the words Aeon etched into the back along with the Bosque logo. Are they going to wipe out the western sector with it? Are they going to like... Is that the idea? They're setting them up so that they can mind control the entire western sector and make them kill themselves or something? That'd be fucked, but that's exactly the kind of thing Bosque would do. Wipe out the undesirables. Just in one shot, you don't even have to go in there. Waste bullets. God damn. We've seen the crews out and about too, but never noticed the engraving. This is looking really bad now. Do you think it could be a rollout of the new neural ID scanner? One that can't be blocked? Maybe once the Bureau realized there was a way around the system, they sent a message back via the Temper system to counteract us. It's possible. It's always hard to predict Bosk's actions, given their deep knowledge of the timeline, and how little changes can have a big effect on things down the line. Having said that, you would think there'd be a better way to use the Temper system to capture us if that really was their goal. Maybe. The units we saw looked a little like brain scanners, but it definitely seemed to be more than just a security upgrade. I guess we can't be sure what's at th what it is at this stage. The only thing I'm quite certain of is that there is some kind of connection between this device and the technology Elijah built. And whatever it is, it seems they're planning to use it on a bigger scale if those devices have gone up all throughout the city. Yeah, it seemed that way to us too. Perhaps Elijah will have more insight once he wakes up. For now, all we can do is continue with our mission. Whatever this device does, it remains true that Bosk's strong stranglehold comes from their monopoly of the Tempest system. We can stop that. Every, everything else should be trivial in comparison. Let's not lose focus of the main objective. Right. Zala looks over at Elijah's body. He'll come back to us soon, and when he does, we'll be able to make the next steps. I sure hope so. I hope he's found the resolve and purpose he was missing when we last saw him. Are we going back into his mind again? We must be nearly at the end there. In the sink machine, Elijah's underworld journey of memories continue. Dad! Dad! Yes, sweetie? Can we play some more KidCon? Oh, just a second. I'll set it up for you, my love. Where's Mummy? I want you to come play it with me. Elijah turns his face to his daughter directly. I already told you. She isn't here anymore. When is she going to come back? I thought the doctor was going to make you better. I... I'm sorry. She isn't coming back. Why not? Well... Dad? Why are you crying? Elijah pauses, wiping his tears, and does his best to pretend to be happy for the sake of Rhea. Oh, am I? Sorry. Elijah tries to move on quickly, turning momentarily as if distracted by the work he must return to. Did I make you sad, Daddy? It wasn't you. I'm just sad that Mummy isn't coming back, that's all. It's okay, sweetie, I'm fine now. You won't go away too, will you, Daddy? No, I won't ever leave you. Not until the world ends. Good. I miss Mummy. Where did she go? I told you, sweetheart. She's gone to be with the angels in heaven. I don't know why she can't come back, though. When you make that trip, you can't make your way back here. She didn't want to leave, but she had no choice. Why did she have no choice, Dad? Everyone has to make the trip one day. But we don't get to choose when, darling. At least, not normally. What do you mean? Don't worry, it doesn't matter right now. Elijah gets to his feet and ushers Rhea on toward the playroom. 
Come on, I'll play KidCon with you instead. Okay, but I get to choose my character first. Alright, but only three games, because Daddy's got to get back to his work. Elijah, thanks for coming in. No problems. How you been holding up? It's been pretty tough, but I got my work to focus on at least. And how about Raya? It's been what? A bit over a month now since Tara passed? How's she handling it? She was okay at first, she didn't really understand. Then she started throwing tantrums, asking for her to come back. Being stuck in this facility didn't give her the best understanding of life and death, I suppose. I had to be pretty blunt with her. It's kind of messing me up. It isn't easy, and there isn't any right or perfect way to deal with it. Just do whatever you can, and give us a yell if you need some help with it. Thank you. And how's the project progressing? It's a bit frustrating at the moment. I'm at a stage where I really need a conceptual breakthrough. The device isn't too far from being finished in every other regard. So once we get that final bit figured out, it won't be difficult to finish the device fairly quickly. And what's the main issue you're facing that you need to figure out? How to reliably identify and seek the entangled particles for use with the system. There are some unusual behaviours the particles take in the Tempest field that make them unusually difficult to predict. Are you still confident you'll be able to figure it out and complete the machine? Yes, I have to come through, we've got no other choice. There are always patterns involved with particle behaviour, even if it is complicated to map them. Once you figure out the patterns, we'll be able to predict and therefore perfect the machine. It's just a matter of time. Good. Now you'll be pleased to hear I got some of the equipment you asked me to order you. It wasn't easy to get, I hope you're appreciative. I very much am, thank you sir. Now, are you sure this isn't going to distract you from your mission? I'm sure. I work long days and nights. It helps to have an unrelated project to work on occasionally. It helps to keep the mind fresh. Well, I have to take your word for it. I know you're doing this for the sake of your daughter. But don't let it take away from your main mission. Remember, you're a neuro not a neuroscientist, so what you're doing could become quite time-consuming if you're not careful. I get it, and I don't need reminding of what's at stake if I fail my main mission. Don't worry, sir. Developing a dense data memory set should be fairly achievable. We may not have the ability to utilize digital brain data at the moment, but there's at least a technology to scan it. I'll need to develop the scanning detail a little further than currently possible, but not by much. It shouldn't take up too much time. The big job would be what to do with the dense data set, which fortunately isn't my problem. Isn't a problem we have to worry about. Okay, well, I've said my piece, so as long as you understand. I'd better go. I have a meeting with some of our benefactors. There aren't many left able to support us at this stage, so it's an important job. All the best, Elijah. Don't forget to call on us if you need any help. In the research laboratory, Elijah sees his past self carrying out a vital experiment. This could be it. If this goes the way I think it will, then it could lead to the breakthrough I've been waiting for. I just need these figures to show a positive result. There's a lot of expectation pinned on this experiment. So much desperation. Is this the moment that leads to the discovery? Okay, the computer's almost done with the results. Here we go. Elijah waits with hands clasped together for the result the computer is about to spit out. Okay, it's done. What do we got? What do we got? Let's see. Elijah's eyes dart left to right as he reads the result of the monitor as quickly as he can, anxious to learn the results. No. No, it can't be right. Nothing? <laughs> nothing? <laughs> so what the hell have I been wasting my time on? It was all for nothing. Damn it. Elijah's frustration balloons into an uncontrolled outburst of rage as he punches a metal panel with full force, venting months of pent-up emotions. Damn it all. Damn it. Stop. Yeah. <sighs> Elijah's outpouring of anger continues until he can punch no longer. He stands heaving deep breaths with bloodied knuckles as his eyes stare at the floor beneath him. He then notices a figure in the corner of his eye, and he swivels to see Rhea, standing frozen still, looking back with fear in her eyes. Rhea, why are you in here? I heard you shouting, I thought something happened. Rhea responds in a quiet but clear voice, a voice coated in sadness and fear. Leading out a sigh, Elijah brings himself back to focus as he begins to feel the shame of frightening his only daughter. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that, sweetie. That must have been scary. It's okay now. I was just very upset at something that happened. Daddy, you said not to scream and shout and to use my words. Elijah responds with an empathetic smile, one that conveyed a father, both proud of his daughter, but also aware of his shortcomings. I know, you're right, I did the wrong thing. Will you forgive me? Yes, but don't do it again. Rhea shifts tone now, as if playing the adult in the situation. I won't, I promise. I'm glad I didn't frighten you too much after my little tantrum. Don't worry, Dad. I know you're just sad Mummy's gone. Elijah looks over at Rhea, a look of surprise springing from the clarity of understanding coming from such a young girl. You're right, I do miss Mummy. 
Tears start to form in his eyes as he tries to his best to keep himself under control. It's okay, Dad. I do too. Rhea walks over to her father as Elijah crumples down to the ground. Rhea cradles her dad in her tiny arms, as if he were the child, as the two pour out their emotions right there on the cold floor of the research laboratory. As the day turns into days turn into months, and the months turn into years, the flashing haze of memories weighs heavily on Elijah. I don't know how much more of this I can actually take. I'm already past my limit, but I can't stop it. A conglomerate of voices and emotions ring out in an un undefined manner, as he finds himself once again in the abstract world of his past self's mental state. You'll never do it, no matter how much you try. You won't find the secret. You thought you had the answer before, and look where that led you. You really think you're some kind of hero? That you can save the world? It was Tara who was the genius. If she couldn't figure it out, how do you think you will? The onslaught of accusing voices chime in from every angle and direction. Even if you did manage to find the answer, what would then happen to Rhea? Will you really make the choice to erase your own daughter? What kind of father are you? I guess he... I wasn't as resolute on the inside as it looked on the outside. I suppose he really was acting that way to try and convince himself. As Elijah contemplates the situation, light begins to engulf him significantly as the next mem- sig signifying the next memory in the sequence. Sorry. In the scene before him, Elijah is sitting hunched over his desk, pouring through data sets, while Rhea plays on the floor next to him. You sure you're okay playing on that hard floor? You've been doing a lot, it a lot recently. Why don't you go over to your playroom? I'm okay. I'll head in there to watch something later. Guess it's probably a bit lonely being in that room over there all day. Yep, and someone's got to keep you company, Dad. It's true, otherwise I'll turn into quite the mess, as we know. Mm-hmm. Rhea agrees with a large nod. Elijah continues to talk while his eyes are glued to the screen in front of him. So what are you doing anyway? What game are you playing? It's not a game. I'm trying to learn some card tricks. I was watching a show about magicians, and I'm trying to learn to do it myself. Card tricks, eh? It was only a few years ago that all you wanted to do was play KidCon. Looks like you really leveled up. Dad, that was ages ago. Feels like just a blink for me. Even more so for me. So what's the, what trick are you learning? A magician never reveals their secrets. Well, in that case, why don't you just try it out on me? See if you can get one past your wise old man. Okay, I don't get it right every time yet, but I'll try. Rhea shuffles her deck in clear view, then presents the deck, fanned out and face down before Elijah. Pick a card, any card. Wait, you've even been practicing the voice, alright. Elijah picks a card at random and slides it out from the deck. Make sure I can't see it. Now take a good look at your card. You know what it is? Yep, I got it. Alright, hold, I'll hold the deck. You can slot the card in any way you like into the deck. Done. Rhea closes the deck around the card, giving it a brief shuffle. Okay, there we go. Ray, with a smile on her face and high amounts of enthusiasm, flicks the top card of the deck. This dislodges the top card, revealing the card underneath has, to the eyes, suddenly been flipped from its earlier orientation. Behold! The power of magic! Is this your card facing you now? The Ten of Hearts? It was! That was really impressive. I didn't even notice you doing anything strange. Ray wears a big grin, proud she succeeded in her trick when under pressure. Now I know a magician never reveals their tricks, but I'm curious how you did it without me noticing. I can kind of guess how the trick works, something to do with flipping the deck, but I didn't see anything strange. All I can tell you is, you were looking in the wrong place, Dad. The cards were always where you expected them to be, the trick is really simple. I had to practice distracting you and flipping it over in a way you couldn't notice, so you end up convinced the flip never happened. Wait, 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 wait. Elijah's eyes suddenly light up as he springs into action, flinging himself in his swivel chair back toward his desk. What is it, Dad? That's brilliant, I never thought of it that way. You're brilliant, Raya. Rhea is taken aback for a second. Confused, but also chuffed at the compliments. You liked my trick? Liked it. It was amazing. And who knows? That trick might have just made a big a difference bigger than you could have imagined. It's too early to say, but I have a good feeling about this one. Thanks, Dad. I guess I helped you think of a good idea. You sure do. Did. I gotta get back to work now and check this idea out before I get ahead of myself. Thanks again, love. You're welcome. Elijah, what has happened? Please tell me you have some good news to report. I do, sir. I think we did it. You did it? I still need to integrate the theory into the technology, but I've made a significant advancement. 
I think finishing this machine in the near future is going to be a very real possibility. Go on, what have you discovered? Alright, you want the technical, ex technical explanation or just the gist of it? Just the gist of it, something I understand. Remember, I'm not a scientist. Right. Well, Rhea gave me some inspiration while she was showing me a card trick. It involved flipping the deck around without a person noticing. It was a sleight of hand type trick. It got me thinking. What if something was happening outside our line of sight that was altering the landscape of what we were seeing? And what if we could use this to our advantage? How do you mean? Well, think of it this way. It's pretty hard to stumble upon the correct card in the deck when playing by the rules. However, if you flip the cards and then add the person's card back into the deck after they select it, then it becomes obvious. It's simply the only card in the deck facing the other direction. So, have you found a way to flip the deck, so to speak? Or identify the correct entangled particle? Yes. Obviously this is always how the receiver was going to function in receiving the data. But to flip it back around, and use the unusual behaviour of the Tempest particle interaction across time to cause the transmitter to reveal the correct particle in anticipation of such a change. Well, I guess the answer was hiding in plain sight. I see. So was this line of thinking led you, that led to your discovery? Exactly. I don't want to get too technical be to say much more would require getting into the nuts and bolts of it. In a nutshell, I've utilised the mathematical properties of the way quantum fields work in higher dimensions. Those we deem speculative, past our common core. I applied these equations, then inverted them for time, to see if they would lead to our entangled particles sticking out from the rest, like our upside down card in the deck. Most of that went over my head. But if it's just speculative, how could you verify it? Some of the equations I tried were speculative, until now. In the past we never had a good way to test some of these dimensions, now we have proof. We've now confirmed our temper system was able to, with absolute 100% certainty, correctly identify sync particles across time by inverting the equations that incorporate larger, higher dimensions as factors. When you apply these formulas, rather than searching for a needle in a haystack, it transforms into being obvious which correctly entangled one it is. I'll be able to refine these formulas until the machine is perfected. We did it. Tara, we did it. You were right all along. Finally, some good news. How long do you think it will take to complete the machine? Well, coming up with the formulas to work practically with the system, refining them, coding the software and tuning the hardware, all of it is quite involved. It will require a lot of testing and whatnot. I'm confident I can pl complete it in somewhere between one and two years. We... We won't have that long, I'm afraid. What? The words of Rahilla like cold water poured over his head, shattering Elisha's enthusiasm. I know it's bad out, of there, out there, but I'm completely confident we can do it if I have the time. And I don't doubt you. It's just become total bedlam out there. All world governments have essentially collapsed. Our supporters are doing what they can but it's hard to know how long civility and cooperation will even last in this climate. Getting food and supplies is already hard enough. I can't imagine another few years of this. But we're so close! You just have to work to complete it as fast as you can, and we'll work to give you as much time as possible. There is no way to know if that'll be enough, but it's all we can do at this stage. We need to work as efficiently as possible. Have you got the data package ready to be sent to the past once the transmitter is complete? It's going to be seriously convincing, as well as have all the correct vaccine formulations. We do. Most of it we've had ready for a while now, including the endorsement and supply of many, and support of many of the world governments. These governments mostly don't exist anymore now, but it's not like they would know that in the next timeline. Yeah, I guess that's true. We've updated the data package many times and included the vaccine formula, among all the other evidence we could think of. It's been ready to send well and truly before you. It'll be ready to send well and truly before you finish your transmitter. Just make sure you also write up the designs and plans for the transmitter in a foolproof manner so we can add it to the data pack and send it back along with everything else. I'll do that. If everything goes right, I think we can do this. I sure hope so. As long as we can survive here long enough. True. Maybe we should start rationing the food we are getting now in preparation. We've already started doing that, but I think we'll need to take that to a new level from now on. That means meal sizes will decrease and the little luxuries we have will be gone from now on. We just have to put up with what we got. Fine by us. We have only one priority now. Nothing else matters. Indeed. One thing I want to ask you on a more personal note. Have you been going with that other project you're working on? What progress have you made? Elijah's face contorts in response to the question. That badly, huh? <sighs> yeah, it isn't going very well. What's the problem? Is it a problem with the scanning device you're building? It's not that exactly. The technology is pretty well established already and I've made the needed improvements. What is it then? Well. I was hoping there'd be a possibility of using it to... Yes? Save Rare. I see. And how would you do that using this technology? Well, I was thinking maybe we could scan her memories, find a way to transfer her into, her into the new timeline through the Tempest system, along with everything else. I figured that much. I don't see how that actually worked, though. It's pretty stupid, isn't it? 
That's what I've been trying to figure out for the last little while. But every option I think of is a dead end. We don't currently have AI sophisticated enough to house a human identity. And even if we did, that'd be a cruel existence to see my daughter's lingering brain state into a computer. It would. And there is the question of if you could even call that kind of existence your daughter, or just a computerized copy. I was also thinking along the lines of sending her DNA sequence along with her memories, and perhaps she could be restored there. Rahil wears a look of surprise at Elijah's revelation. Elijah, I have to be honest with you. You're getting into some pretty twisted and desperate lines of thinking. This really isn't healthy. Elijah looks at the floor in silence before eventually responding, I know. Apparently it's just, I've just become that twisted. Cooped up in this facility with nothing but Raya and my screaming thoughts about everything I've got to solve. I guess it's got me into a pretty strange place. It doesn't matter anyway, because those plans with Raya would never work. The infant mind is never stable to begin with. Their brain states are constantly changing as they develop. Trying to scan it and match it to a new host body, even one with the same genetic makeup, it's basically impossible. No matter how much technology advances. I'm going to have to be very blunt with you, Elijah. But no I'm doing this as your friend. No matter what you do, you can't save her. Whatever trickery you do is scanning her mind, even if you succeed, it wouldn't be the same rare as you have here. At best it would be a close copy. You do know that, don't you? Yeah, I guess I do. Suppose I've just been trying to bury my head in the sand, getting a little too obsessed about it all. Elijah's somber tone is distinctly different to his normal inflection, causing Rahil to respond to, to, to respond to by trying to pick up Elijah's spirits. Nobody could blame you though, Elijah. Anyone in your shoes would be doing all they could to try and find a way around it. It's not just that. How can I make a choice to save the world but discard my own daughter? You'll get your family back. I'll be there too, as well as Tara. But Rhea? She was conceived after the pandemic. Right here in this facility, there's no chance she'll be there. Elijah, I... Elijah doesn't let Rahil get a word on, continuing as he releases everything in his mind. And it isn't just that. You know what Tara's final wish was? It was for her daughter not to be forgotten. That she would find a way to live on. How could I possibly just erase his smile by my own hands? How can I sacrifice her to let others live? Even worse, how can I expunge all traces of her existence? That's crueler than death. It's like she never lived at all. Nobody will even remember her. Even me. No amount of photos or evidence I could send through could ever replace the experience of truly knowing her. Of truly loving her. And how can I just trample on Tara's final wish? Tell me, how am I supposed to respond to all this? Rahil allows the silence to linger before responding calmly and intentionally. None of this has been fair from the start. I'm not going to pretend I know the best way for you to handle this. What I do know is the responsibility we have. The responsibility the 8 billion souls lost to this disease. The responsibility to those who have quite literally given their lives to see this facility and this project through to fruition. Do what you can to let her memory live on, even if it's only for yourself. Just don't lose sight of what is important here. I know you're right, though it doesn't make it easier. <sighs> but I still need to hear it. And I really do need to get some perspective. I guess I kind of lose that working and obsessing on this stuff all day. I'm probably going a little crazy at times to be honest. I understand. Just remember that once you send that message, this will all become a bad dream. Don't overthink this. Well, the dream wasn't all bad. At least there was one ray of light out there. And that ray of light helped you through to potentially saving 8 billion lives. Didn't you just say that she inspired your idea? Just because people may not remember her, it doesn't mean she wasn't significant. In a way, her life lives on through every single one of those saved in the new timeline. That is her true legacy, Elijah. That's what he meant by let her legacy live on. <sighs> You're right. I guess I just need to think of a way, of, of it that way, and steal myself. I really have no other option. Still, I'd like to at least remember her myself in the new timeline. At least there'd be one person who didn't forget her. That'd be much more bearable. Elijah, I can't allow you to spend any more time on this. As we just said, we're now in a race against the clock. All I can suggest from what you said is that you scan and send your own digital data. You'll just have to leave it in the hands of those in the next timeline to figure out. It's something, at least. Anyway, I'd better keep moving. We'll work toward the completion of the transmitter. We'll ration out what food we have to give ourselves as much time as we can. Finish it as soon as humanly possible. Okay, I'll do everything I can. And with that, we're out of time for this episode. But he has made the breakthrough. And we're still not at the end of his memories. But Tara is gone now, and it looks like we're about to finish building that uh, transmitter. And then Raya will be gone too, I guess. So that's why he sent back his memories, because he couldn't send back hers to bring her back. So he sent back his memories, so that they could 
he could put it in his own head so that he could remember she existed. He'd be the only one, but at least he would remember. That's pretty sad, man. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.